I did the famous experiment, which led to the book, The Patterns of Attachment, and I think that viewers should really appreciate what she did. First, she has 28 children. Now, that's a pretty small sample. They're all middle class. They're all white. This is a very unusual, these are 28 middle class infants and families from Baltimore. It's not pretty representative. She's done the initial research in Uganda. No, no, no. Now she's back in Hopkins. Now she's back in, in Baltimore. And, and, and she's going to develop the strange situation. She didn't develop it in Uganda. That's right. That's right. Okay. So now she and her graduate students uh, do the following very uh, important study. The graduate students go out to the homes many times in the first year and observe the mother-infant interaction in the first year. They observe it. Now, she invents the strange situation, and I described it earlier, and now you bring the infants in at one year, and you see who shows the three types. Let me remind listeners of the three types. Yep, good. Type A is insecurely attached because these children don't get upset when the mother leaves, and they don't go to her they seem indifferent to the mother. Type C, insecurely attached, they're the ones who become extremely upset when the mother leaves, and they're so upset that when she returns, they won't quiet. Those two types are called insecurely attached. The type that Mary and her colleagues call B, those are the children who cry a little when the mother leaves, and they're sobbing a little when she returns, but the mother picks them up, and they're quickly quieted, and Mary said, that's a securely attached child. Now, here's the error. The error is that the students told her, you know, the kids you call B, securely, they're very good at home. They rarely cry. But the kids who are C, they're crying all the time. And the potential error, therefore, is the following. You're a graduate student, and you're trying to rate the sensitivity of the mother. B children are temperamentally, they have a temperament, they don't, they don't get very upset when the mother leaves them in this strange room and they're easily quiet. They have a what I call a low reactive temperament. Well, such a baby is very easy to take care of and therefore it is extremely easy for the graduate students to say, well, wow, that's a very sensitive mother. Look, her kid is so happy. And so we, I think that was the potential error that Mary and her students made. They assumed that the children who behave like type B did so because their mothers were so sensitive. What I'm saying is this is a two-way street. It's easy to be sensitive with an easy baby, and it's hard to be sensitive with a very irritable baby. So let's take the type C and securely attached. This is a baby who is very irritable, cries all the time, nothing the mother does, the mother loves the baby, nothing the mother does helps this mother's getting frustrated. So the graduate students say, oh, that's an insensitive mother. But this is a ballet. This is a marriage. It's hard to be sensitive with an extremely irritable, labile baby. So in all the years that, so this Mary Ainsworth did her work, was it 30 years ago? In the 70s, yes. In the 70s. Oh, so, so whatever, so, so part of your quarrel with uh, attachment theory is as a scientist, you don't trust the measurement of the strange situation. I don't, not at all. Because you think it's a confounding of temperament and of what, uh, exactly. this, what the attachment theory people are saying, this is, they're measuring a relationship. You're, you're saying that what they're really measuring in many cases is a inborn temperamental disposition. 